हेलो गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स सो ऑलरेडी यू नो थ्री चैप्टर्स फिनिश्ड एंड फोर्थ चैप्टर आल्सो स्टार्टेड व्हिच इज शॉर्टिंग मटेरियल्स इनटू ग्रुप्स सो इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म आई हैव रिटन एस एम आई जी एस फॉर शॉर्टिंग एम फॉर मटेरियल्स आई फॉर इनटू एंड जी फॉर ग्रुप्स सो माय फोर्थ चैप्टर इज शॉर्टिंग मटेरियल्स इनटू ग्रुप्स सो व्हिच इज ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड टेबल्स यू हैव गॉट uh as homework from the book a uh, few question answers also you have got important question answers so regarding this or uh, regarding this chapter now i will uh, just uh, start the demonstration or you can say explanation so first of all the chapter is all about shorting materials into groups means why we will do the shorting first of all so regarding this we will discuss now shorting is uh, very much essential for the materials because it is uh, highly required to get the appropriate materials from appropriate places which is very much essential so if you will not do this then it will be very much difficult to identify the objects basically and secondly uh, if you want to do any special kind of work with similar type of uh, objects then it will also be very much uh, difficult to uh, find out those similar type of objects from different places so first of all this segregation or differentiation can be done with the help of similarities or similar properties between the objects and along with the dissimilarities or you can say with the differences between the objects so this way we will start the chapter and first of all lot of properties are there on which we will discuss now because on those properties we can segregate the materials so first of all generally we can say the topics will uh, means the properties will be like that texture it may be appearance then appearance means how does it look like particular object on that basis we can segregate uh um, then solubility means uh, the objects in which uh, liquid uh, it can be dissolved or it cannot be dissolved that is called as solubility then density you can say density means um, how much um, uh, mass of that object along or with respect to its volume that is called the density means on how much water it can be uh, it can float or it can sink that is called the density or um, uh, already told mass by volume it is called the density of that particular object then a lot of properties are there already told texture appearance then solubility then density then you can say uh, uh, you can say like transparency you can say like uh, uh, hardness means how much hard it, the object is how much hard actually or how much soft the object is on that basis also you can segregate then you can say transparency transparency that you know the topic means to which uh, uh to which materials light can pass very nicely or to which objects light cannot pass properly means partially light can pass and the objects to which light can never pass so such type of transparent transparency that is called the property such in such a way the objects properties can be segregated from each other so let's see let's come to the main point so these are the things next come to the main point so students as you can see i have written one question over here that what is grouping all uh, also you have got this question in your uh, as a pdf uh, in your school website so what is called grouping first of all so grouping that is the main question over here what is called grouping the process of dividing differences the process of dividing the differences or uh, dividing the different objects into groups on the basis of similarities and differences among them is called grouping so the process of dividing different objects you have to divide the objects that process on which basis on the basis of similarities and differences that particular process is called grouping so you have to divide the objects this way on the basis of similarities or dissimilarities now on which 
based means on which criteria you can group the materials already mentioned first is texture then appearance then solubility then hardness then density and then transparency so these are the basic uh, criteria on which you can group the materials this is the main thing now or next question is that why will do this what is the basic advantage of this grouping what is the basic advantage like you can say it helps to identify the objects first uh, the main advantage is it is that it helps to identify the objects that is the main thing next it helps in sorting of objects thus preventing them from getting them mixed up so if the objects will get mixed up with one another so it will be very much problematic to identify the objects so that's why if you will group them or if you will sort the materials or objects then it will prevent them from getting mixed up which is very much important advantage next it helps to locating things if you will group the objects and if you will segregate them properly and if you will keep them the same group of objects together in a particular place then you can keep in your mind that these group of items or this group of materials are kept there so whenever you will require the similar type of objects then you can easily find out from that particular place or from that particular group of materials which is one more important advantage next advantage is it can be it helps to understand the similarities and differences between the objects so this is one more thing as you have segregated or already you have uh, group the materials on the basis of their uh, similarities and differences so this way you can keep in your mind that the what are the basic differences or what are the basic uh, you can say similarities of the particular materials so whenever someone will ask you that what are the basic features of that particular item or uh, particular items then you can easily say or then you can easily tell them that these are the basic features of those materials because already you know what are the pro uh, properties because you can segregate them on the basis of their properties from uh, or what are the differences on the what are the similarities with other objects of that particular object so to do that you have to know the properties of all the materials so whenever you will do then you will know about the um, uh, properties of those materials so that is very much important part of your science last question is that why this is not the last question of this chapter means today's last topic is that why are cooking utensils are not made of wood or plastics because on which um, frying pans or other uh, cooking utensils are there or already you are using or your uh, parents basically your mothers are using to cook the items food items so which these are not made of wood or plastics why it is so because wood or plastics will catch fire easily that we know so that's why if it will be made of plastic or wood then it will catch fire easily so that's though nowadays a lot of wood wooden items uh, like um, uh, wooden items or plastic items we are using to cook because it is made in such a way uh, it will never catch fire so that's why it can be used but directly uh, basic, or basically we cannot use direct in the fire those cooking utensils which are made of wood or plastics because it will catch fire easily that is the main thing you have to keep in your mind so today up to this much so uh, wait for my next class and few more questions or few more important topics very much important topics are there uh, it will be discussed in my next class so up to this today thank you very much visit again objects around us and their material there are various objects around us they can be grouped in different ways based on properties such as size shape color or their use 
There is one more property with which we can classify objects. It is based on material from which the object is formed. A material is a thing such as wood, glass, plastic, cotton, metals, mud, paper, etc. from which object can be formed. In general, any substance or mixture of substances which has mass and volume is called material. We see different objects around us. These are formed from different materials. While classifying them, we have to consider few things. These are A single object is usually formed from different materials. For example, a bicycle is made of metal, rubber and plastic. A utensil is made of metal with the handle of wood or plastic. A spectacle is made of plastic and glass. However, a single object can also be formed from single material. For example, balloon is made of rubber. A toy is made of plastic. A towel is made of cotton. It is also important to note that a single material can be used to make different objects. For example, from wood, we produce things such as tables, chairs, doors, wardrobes, etc. From cotton, we produce things such as shirts, pants, bed sheets, towels, etc. Here is a table showing some of the materials and things produced from them. So, how can we classify objects? Here are a few things. To classify, we will identify materials from which it is made. So, these are the things which are made of plastic, these are made of wood, and these are the things which are made from combination of more than one material. To test your knowledge, here is a question. Find the odd man out from the given example. Basketball, eraser, gloves, tube, bottle, balloon. The answer is bottle. We use material called rubber for making all the things except bottle. For bottle, we use plastic or glass material. Visit learnfatafut.com for more such interesting videos. You can now download Learn Fatafut Android app. For better learning, you can also buy your favorite course in the form of DVD, pen drive, SD card or tablet phone. Introduction You are in a department store with your parents. Your mother wants to pick up grocery. Your father wants to look at some paintings. You want some music DVDs for yourself. The three of you head in three different directions in the department store. Why? Because all the objects in the store are categorized into different sections according to their types. Such organization is convenient and leads to better management. In this lesson, we will learn in detail about the basis for classification of materials. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to sort materials on the basis of their shape, sort materials on the basis of their state, sort materials on the basis of the raw material used, understand why sorting of materials is important. What makes life interesting is its variety. Look around yourself. You see people of different regions speaking different languages, engaged in different professions, eating different food and pursuing different hobbies. That is not all. There is variety in all the goods that we use in our lives. Clothes that we wear are of different colors such as red, green, yellow, blue, etc. The containers we use for storage vary in shapes. They are conical, cylindrical, cuboidal, etc. The sofa sets and dining tables we use in our homes are made of wood or plastic. 
Based on our observation, we conclude that all objects have different shapes, color and properties. All objects are made of one or more materials. Clothes are designed from cotton, linen, jute, nylon, etc. We use glass, stainless steel or plastic crockery in our homes. Furniture is made of wood, plastic or even iron and stone. Leather, plastic, resin or jute is used to make bags, shoes and jackets. Vehicles such as scooters, cars, buses are made of steel. Therefore, we may say that objects around us are made up of a large variety of materials. A box is a cube or a cuboid, whereas a ball is a sphere. A laundry bag is cylindrical in shape, whereas a washing machine is cuboidal. Thus, we can say that we can classify objects on the basis of their shapes as well. Circular or spherical objects form one group, while cubical, cuboidal, square and rectangular objects form another group. Such a classification allows us to study and analyze the properties of different shapes. The first object you use as soon as you wake up is your toothbrush. Have you ever wondered what is it made up of? It is made up of plastic. The plate you have your breakfast in is made of melamine or stainless steel. The cupboard you keep your books or clothes in is made of iron or wood. The books that you read are made of paper. The shoes you wear are made of leather, canvas or resin. Thus, all the objects that we use in our day-to-day -day life can be classified on the basis of the raw materials used in making them. The water you drink to quench your thirst is liquid, whereas the food you eat is solid. The chilled juice you relish in summers is liquid, whereas the glass container you have it from is solid. The steaming hot milk you enjoy in winters is liquid whereas the steam coming out of the milk is a gas. Thus, it is clear that all the objects that we see around us or use in our daily life can be classified into one of the three categories, solid, liquid and gas. We have been looking at the different bases for classifying objects, that is, materials. Have you wondered why such classification is important? In our everyday life, we come across many materials. Sorting materials into groups plays an important role in our daily life because it is easy to locate similar objects by placing them together. Sorting materials into groups also facilitates study of their properties and allows us to observe patterns in their behavior. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Objects around us are of different shapes, color and state. Objects are made of different materials. Objects can be classified on the basis of their shapes and color. They can be classified on the basis of the state of their matter. Yet another basis for classification is the raw material used to create objects. Sorting objects allows us to locate them easily. Sorting objects also allows us to study their properties.